Assume this meeting of the Board of Health will come to order. My name is Thomas Corey. This is Nurse Donna Strong, Dr. Daniel Souza, Tess Curran, agent for the board. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. We need to approve the minutes of the meeting of April 24th. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to be made to the minutes of the meeting as printed? I hear, I hear two no's. Can we have a motion to accept? I make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from April 24th, 2019. I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, so voted. Okay, we have some requests for approval of tech tattoo practitioner licenses. Nicholas Seth, come on down. <coughs> Nathaniel Teasdale, we're going to come on down. And Corey Goyette. And Lisa, I guess, is presenting. You want us right here? Yeah, sure. We can I'll lean stand. against the rail. This is going to be a very tough interrogation today. All right. Perfect. Okay. No wires. Can we heckle them? Oh, well, Lisa, you can. So I was going to say, please take the seat. I'll stand with them. That's what's okay. Lisa, we, I, uh, all, all the items are presented. They to are. They're all. And they all look to be in order. We have a couple of them that have been here in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, Corey owned his own tattoo shop at one time here in the city. Um, let me see. You Nick can't beat Nick them, join <laughs> So they, they, they um, have all their credentials are in, mm -hmm. in order here. Three of them, they're all gonna be working at the Fall River Tattoo uh, Shop, the new one that opened up. Uh, you approved in April to mm -hmm. two of the gentlemen that are here also. Mm -hmm. So all their credentials are here and in order. Anyone have any questions? I, I went through the paperwork, it looked like it was but uh, yes. all the certificates were here. Yes. And your recommendation? I, I recommend all the uh, all of them to go. I, as far as I'm concerned, it's I, I know it's I know a few of them <laughs> for some time. So. And uh, you gentlemen are looking for steady employment here in Fall River at the tattoo shop. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Very good. And where is 1412? Globe Four Farms. So the old Players Park building, if you're old enough to remember South that. Side Giant. Oh, South okay. Side South Side Giant right. is it? International. Right there at the corner of Globe and South Bay. There was a pharmacy, Corrigan's. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? Do we want to grant individually, or we want to do all three in one motion? We can do all three in one motion. So I'll make a motion to approve that Mr. Nicholas Plattenberg, uh, Mr. Jim Teasdale, Mr. Corey Goyette be approved for their license to pursue their tattooing at the aforementioned facility. I second that motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Gentlemen, good luck. Go for it. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. You're welcome. Why is there any sweating? Dude, we just stood in front of the board. Whose glasses? Thank you. Hi, Nate. Yeah, those are mine. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, we have an update on tobacco compliance checks. What's his Marilyn? Sarah, you're welcome. Marilyn, have you retired yet officially? June 28th. June 28th. Don't look so happy. Uh, I'm not yet. <laughs> You're not yet? Check with me on the 28th at about 4 o'clock. Uh-huh. Sarah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You have an update for us. I do. I have completed the sign R, which is the state assigned. There was no sales, so that's asking for um, Newport or Marlboro in just mm -hmm. one zip code. We had no sales. 90% of the cigar ones are done. I have 20 left to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so far, no sales. Very Lock good. on wood. So it's going good. The rest of those will be done um, before June 30th. Okay. That's it? So all good news. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Great news. Okay. <laughs> yep, that's it. Shucks, we don't have anyone to haul before the board. No. <laughs> to invoke no. our thunder. <laughs> nope. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.
Okay, we're going to open up a public hearing regarding the regulation to ensure the sanitary and safe operation of adult use marijuana establishments and the sale of adult use marijuana. Um, we're going to be making some um, amendments to the regulation and tests, if you would, please. Sure. Um, so, in your, within your packet, there's uh, two versions of an mm -hmm. updated regulation. Mm -hmm. One uh, does not exempt vape products. Mm -hmm. um, so just to, to back up a little, the, the reason that we're you know here today re-looking at this regulation is to uh, provide some clarity on what specifically a marijuana accessory um, is defined as. Um, so within both regulations, uh, the marijuana accessory definition is uh, expanded and defined um, as equipment, products, devices, or materials that are intended um, or designed for use in ingesting, inhaling, or otherwise introducing adult use marijuana into the body, including but not limited to bongs, pipes, glass pipes, hookah apparatus, and dab rigs. So that um, is the template for the marijuana accessory definition. However, in the there's another version that exempts vape products from that definition, um, which at this point in time, um, you know, I would encourage the board to consider um, using that definition that I just read mm -hmm. and then exempting vape products. Um, the reason for that um, is because uh, the vape products Primary use is for a nicotine delivery system. Um, if the board was to consider or wish to exempt vape products or put any type of regulation in for vape products, I would encourage that regulation to go under a tobacco regulation and not be listed under this marijuana regulation. Um, the reason for that is because there's a wide variety of vape products. And I have some examples that I'll just kind of quickly go over. Um, so closed systems would not be considered a marijuana accessory. Those are items like jewels, blue, where you have a, you know, a device and then you have these pods that are pre-filled and then it's you know, a cartridge that you just really plug in um, and then you dispose of that cartridge. Um, and these are you know, pre-filled with nicotine primarily. Um, and these are you know, sold at convenience stores and gas stations throughout the city. Um, and these would not be considered a marijuana accessory, even as defined with the vape exemption. However, um, a device like this, this is considered a tank. And these you fill on your own. So you go to usually a vape store and you purchase the, you know, uh, the juice, which is a nicotine product, or THC. Um, and you fill it yourself. And that's really what this distinction is. Um, so it gets a little confusing, and I think for the purposes of the marijuana um, regulation, that it would be wise to, at this time, exempt vape products. I would then encourage you, if you are interested in, in regulating vape products, like I said, to put that under a tobacco regulation. Um, and in the meantime, if you are interested and you do uh, decide to exempt the vape products, then I could have um, someone who does vaping presentations come in and really go over all the specifics and ins and outs of a closed system versus an open system um, because it can be quite confusing. And part of my concern is that if we don't exempt the vape products this time, that it would be difficult to um, enforce that component of the regulation. Um, because it's you know under a marijuana regulation, not necessarily a tobacco regulation, where it, it makes more sense to be housed. So that's why I just I wanted to provide you with two regulations so that you can see because in the one that says uh, vape does not exempt vape products, um, the definition of marijuana accessories is expanded um, mm -hmm. to include. To include the vape accessories, 
um, vaporizers, vape pens, and then at the end of the regulation, there's also a component that says um, in the sales, marijuana sales, um, that, or sorry, component H, mar marijuana accessories. It's also listed there that the vape products would be exempt. Okay, so the language we're looking at, we're going to be adding, um, we're clarifying what accessories are, and we're really, really adding the one sentence, marijuana accessories shall not include vaporizers, vape pens, tanks that rely on vaporization, or air. That's correct. Aerosolation. Yes. I can say that. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yes. And we're adding three times. And we're adding those in, in both spots. Correct. Questions from the board? I think that's reasonable to exempt them because we're not here to regulate baby parts for mm -hmm. this issue. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's a public hearing. Does anyone wish to speak? <coughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I don't wait, 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 hold on just a second. Raise your hands if you if I speak so I can. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five. The gentleman in blue, six, sir, you? Seven. Gentleman in red, eight. Eight. Anyone else? Eight. Okay. Who wants to come down for the gentleman red? If you if you come down, state your name and address for the record. Okay. My name is uh, Paul Balash, and I own an adult video store in Fall River. I've been there 25 years. <clears throat> so my question is. While we're talking about what's going to be legal and illegal, the state is making certain decisions that I'm sure are going to affect what we decide here today, or don't decide. And uh, I think we should uh, take our foot off the gas and see what the state comes up with, and then work within those parameters. I know that the state wants to sell more licenses. We know the state, insatiable for money, will sell a license for anything. <clears throat> so I don't think any major decisions are going to be made here. Um, and uh, that, that one guy who complained in the newspaper about there was another store going to open up near him selling. I guess he doesn't know what capitalism is. Okay, that's about it. Okay, thank you. Does this affect you in any way, sir? I'm sorry? Does this affect your business? Do you sell any of these products? It can only help me. I own an all-adult store. Nobody goes in that isn't uh, 18. If they change it to 21, it'll be 21. And whether I'm selling adult toys or pipe, and whether the method of inhaling through a pipe or through a vaporizer. I don't see why the method of delivery should matter. They're adults. We have to give people credit for being adults. You know, we don't have to micromanage everything. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The gentleman in the pink chair, sir. That's okay. I'll, I'll pick him up on the way up. Sir, would you state your name and address Thank for the you. record? My name is Philip Beauregard. I'm an attorney. Uh, my firm is Beauregard, Burke, and Franco in New Bedford. We've uh, got a practice that's uh, now and then extends to Fall River here and uh, other uh, toward Boston. Uh, I'm going to make a few points. I don't want to monopolize time, but I think it's very important that these points be heard uh, by the board uh, because they're serious points. and. Uh, at the cost of modesty, I'll tell you that uh, uh, for over four decades I've been practicing law. I've been city solicitor in New Bedford back when, uh, long ago than I want to admit, and town council to a couple of area towns, and in particular I've uh, represented the boards of health, and I've had cases against boards of health uh, in communities as well. Uh, so I, and we've dealt with civil litigation and constitutional issues, if you will, and We've dealt certainly with the Massachusetts Department of Public Health as well. I represent uh, two individuals 
uh, who are here today. One is Muhammad Siddiqui, Seven Days Food Mart, uh, Fall River Business. Uh, these are so-called convenience stores. And also Ifran Hassan, uh, who operates Calm's Food Mart, and they are directly, obviously, affected. I'm going to make uh, several points and bring up a couple of legal issues, if you'll bear with me. I'll try not to be too wordy, although that's a uh, hazard in my profession. Uh, the first point to make and, and is that it's a wholly different atmosphere and culture uh, in the country, and in particular in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and other states. Cannabis is legal. Uh, on, it's a controlled substance. Uh, and it's uh, legal, and not only legal in a controlled substance, but in the sense of it has a very legitimate, if I may dare, uh, medical application at the present time, whether it's by way of uh, creams that are put on uh, joints or uh, various problems that people have. And of course, it's a, uh, a new education, really, that the country is having, uh, both from the point of view of whether it can be used as a uh, leisure type of uh, substance, but also <clears throat> medical use. And in that sense, uh, it's a positive medical product. It's not a bad drug anymore, according to the way the laws have developed in uh, the culture today. This still is the federal matter, that piece, but that uh, undoubtedly will uh, straighten out in time. But for state purposes, uh, it's a positive medical product if it's used appropriately like other products that would be prescribed, and, uh, and it can be used very rationally and effectively. So when you start from that framework, you're not talking about something that's nasty and naughty and that has to be kept out of the hands, not just of minors, but of uh, people in general, because it's illegal, because it's no longer illegal. Uh, so when you get delivery products, accessories, I would suggest to you that we need a turn in thinking now as between an accessory that is used, not always, but maybe for a large part, uh, to deliver an illegal product. That's not really the case anymore. There are, there are legal products, and I would suggest there are legal uh, delivery vehicles. There might very well be a misuse of the legal product. That's why it's controlled. That's why it's licensed and sold only in marijuana uh, uh, or cannabis uh, uh, businesses. Uh, but to take marijuana accessories, so-called, and putting aside, which I'll address in a few minutes, the ambiguity and the vagueness of the definition, definitional problems, which raises constitutional issues. If you're going to regulate something, it has to be clear to the people, the businesses you're regulating, exactly what is permitted and what's not. But I'll put that aside for a minute. And what we're dealing with is uh, taking what is otherwise a very lawful product and a useful product, a good product, in a sense of being used for positive cannabis uses, and you're restricting it to two types of commercial entities. You're restricting it to those who are licensed cannabis dealers and to licensed tobacco dealers. And you're telling uh, convenience stores, you're telling Walmart, you're telling uh, whoever, uh, just generally, uh, interstate commerce in general, if I can use those words, uh, that it cannot be, uh, cannot be used in other than in two specific locations, which obviously for a burgeoning uh, industry in accessory products, now that marijuana, cannabis is uh, taking on the, uh, the stature that it is, is, is a huge billion dollar business. You go on Google, the internet, you read about what's going on in Canada, it's huge. It's, it's, it's good for business people that want to get into something that's really on the rise. And you're taking that and you're restricting it for no valid reason, it would appear, and for a very perilous reason, to two particular kinds of business. Uh, I don't know, and I don't know enough about the background of this to know that there's particular lobbying that's going on presently. I would say that one company that's probably very pleased with the uh, lifting of the vape restriction, with the vaping industry the way it is, is Juul. They couldn't be happier but that they've been excluded from this, uh, from this regulation because now they can distribute wherever they damn well please. And I can remember being uh, in another city with a, an offspring of mine and uh, he's decided to vape instead of smoke cigarettes, which is great, and uh, going to a shop that was just thriving with people. And, uh, uh, and they return people. They keep going back because they need 
uh, more of whatever goes into vaping and uh, etc. So it's a huge industry and you've slanted and tilted the economy in favor, if you do this, of two particular kinds of business. When you translate that into a legal challenge, if there is a legal challenge, uh, it means uh, you're uh, messing with interstate commerce in a way that could very well be held illegal and you're messing with uh, equal protection as well. Some rather highfalutin ideas. I made an effort to see if there have been other cases nationally that have brought this on. I can't find them. I found interestingly, and I think there's a parallel, a case in San Francisco with the Federal District Court that uh, the city of San Francisco told, uh, told pharmacies, told pharmacies, or told the retail industry in San Francisco that if you have a pharmacy in your business, if it's a Walmart, whatever it is, or just a pharmacy, you can't sell cigarettes. And the question then was, well, does that make a whole lot of sense, and, uh, or is that an unnecessary restriction? And the justification that saved that particular ordinance was that pharmacies are seen and perceived as health-oriented institutions. So it wasn't really, and this was at a federal district court level, so it wasn't really something that they were willing to uh, get rid of. That rationale wouldn't exist in this case. What is it about a licensed tobacco store or a uh, marijuana, a licensed marijuana facility that makes it any better uh, to sell uh, so-called marijuana accessories and that reasoning simply isn't there. Uh, the definition, let me get into that at this point, aside from the regulatory problem that I foresee that there could be a challenge and there probably will be a challenge and even if it weren't uh, uh, in this particular case, the City of Fall River, God knows, has its own legal uh, situations going on that why add another one? But if, if this regulation is passed it may well be the one that I can find that is directly in contrast to uh, what the law should call for and what the constitutional law should call for, but that's, that's for another day. I don't mean to say that as a threat, but rather just to try to see whether or not this kind of regulation is uh, kosher. Uh, when you get into the accessories uh, business, I remember seeing, and some of you may have seen this in art, and I had a friend <coughs> lawyer of mine that gave me a copy of this. It's a piece of art that's pretty well known, and it's, uh, it's in French. Uh, the title, it says, Ceci n'est pas une pipe. This is not a pipe. And uh, when I said, well, what are you talking about? So the guy gave it to me, he says, it's a, picture. it's a picture of a pipe. It's not really a pipe. You have pipe in your definition without an adjective on it, I think, and it, it says pipe. And there are other uh, particular uh, there's a hookah, which I'm told is used uh, for, uh, not for marijuana, but for some other, uh, in, the, uh, in the eastern part of the world, uh, it's used with uh, uh, herbs or uh, things like that. I, I am not really that familiar with it. But if you look at your various items that are included in your definition, you're going to find four or five of them that are very troublesome. And there's only one that I can see that in practice seems to be almost always used with marijuana. So other than favoring certain kinds of business for no good reason, uh, you've got a problem with uh, letting those who are being restricted to try to figure out what exactly uh, they can carry and what they can't. And if you go for the entire definition as it's presently stated, it seems to me that you're into items that are very clearly and plainly used for other reasons uh, besides uh, cannabis, even though basically I'm saying it's okay to use it with cannabis because cannabis is legal now. Uh, other people have made the analogies in prohibition. Did they uh, say that you only use martini shakers, buy them in liquor stores or not at all? Uh, what's a martini shaker for? Uh, almost always for martini and it was a period of time that you couldn't have martinis in this country. So uh, for all of those reasons it, it would seem to me that uh, on the surface of it even though the state law says, it, which has to comply with federal law, but the state law says that uh, basically that you can regulate this type of thing, uh, I would say this very serious doubt. 
in my litigation experience, boards of health uh, can do certain things and other things they shouldn't do. And I just wonder why it is that if this city were really serious about this kind of thing, that it wouldn't have it as a proposed ordinance, which would have certain safeguards, publication uh, in the newspaper before, not just after, uh, and uh, challenges to uh, the city as opposed to a particular board. Uh, for passing a, a particular thing, or even state law. If state law stepped up to the plate and clarified that it could only be sold in certain stores, uh, which I don't think is there. It says, on the other hand, it says localities can make their regulations, but they're turning uh, the burden of being fair and of being rational uh, back over to boards without, I would respectfully suggest, without the correct education coming from the state. And I don't mean to say council. Council is... Uh, I'm certain has done a very uh, comprehensive and a good uh, job for you. So all in all, uh, I would submit to you that you have before you uh, a regulation that is faulty. Uh, it's not going to stand if it's challenged legally. Uh, and uh, it's not just a matter of carving it out and uh, tailoring the definition, but uh, it's a matter of just taking this and saying, no, uh, if you're going to do this, don't. It's not a local board of health that should do it. It should be somebody uh, in a higher pay grade, if you will. No, uh, no offense intended. Uh, but somebody that, that rather has the general policing power and not just from a narrow concern, which is your concern, which is what you normally deal with, health regulations. As far as the control and, and the argument of, of uh, 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 kind of people that go in and buy, the gentleman that just uh, has an automatic... Uh, uh, mechanism built into his business that they can't let in minors into his adult video store and I would suggest that uh, convenience stores can certainly as they do tobacco or as liquor stores do with alcohol that there are controls that can be made that just people over 18 or 21 or whatever, whatever the ages would be allowed to buy accessories in appropriate places. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions but uh, that's basically uh, what we'd like you to stop, look, and listen to is these considerations before taking the big, big step of having a local board of health pass a very, very questionable regulation like this. Any questions for the gentleman? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You want the art? <laughs> Not necessary. Gentlemen in the blue, the dark blue as opposed to the white blue. <clears throat> Sir, again, you state your name and address for the record. Mami Siddiqui, 7 days from March, 164 Durfee Street. I uh, just wanted to see a few words or Tanya already said so much and makes sense. I mean, just the first thing is restricted to the choice of the person. I mean, it's the uh, first thing when marijuana is legalized. When coffee is legalized, why can one ban on plates and cups and straws? And second thing, it creates monopoly. Only one hand, every money go. Only one hand. Like, uh, why you want something ban on somebody or restrict? If you buy a shirt from Macy's, you can force buy the tie from them too. They can buy the tie from Marshall. If you buy a pant from J.C. Penney, you cannot force them. Eh? You have to buy a belt from him. He can go job lot to buy the belt. I mean, everybody has a choice. They're 21 years old. And that's been existing since years. We are selling pipes and everything. So why existing business can or should be hurt for this reason? I mean, marijuana legalized. I miss everybody doing business. If I don't know why it's a big issues for the city to not pay. I mean, anyway, they use marijuana, they buy the pipe. They buy whatever they want to buy. And 50%, 40% just not use the pipe for marijuana. He says, hukka. Hukka is the old tradition. My grandfather do it, my father do it. In a community, I have some tobacco, kind of a tobacco, and there's like a fun. So, so they like uh, so many things. Uh, pipe things should not be exactly used by marijuana people. There's a marijuana legalized, so I don't know why you can ban, arrest, take, or people, I, I, you guide the people to a certain store to buy it, not to buy from seven days. Hey, there's a store down there. Why? I mean, that's kind of a, like monopoly or that's kind of a decision. They're really hurting the business. If not hurting, they're hurting, I mean, say, everything is like a, 
should be a big mess, you know. I mean, uh, I can say uh, this law should not be passed. And whatever we're doing, uh, we're doing very good. Like at 21 of age, we're taking care of the law, we're taking care of the city rule regulation, and Paul will do it. We help each other so we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Would you state your name sure. and address for the record? Irfan Hassan, Cannes Food Mart. Um, I just wanted to basically uh, endorse what Attorney Bugard said, and uh, I hope this law don't pass. I don't. We don't want to take this to a court. But so far, uh, all the public hearing we had in front of this board, it seems like you already have made up your mind, and this public hearing is just a dummy hearing to show to the people that we had the public hearing. Last hearing we showed up people, in the article it was saying nobody, there was no opposition. I, right now we're forming a, <clears throat> a process of an association for the small business who is going to look on and get the legal assistance from the law firms regarding, because we are, we, it seems like it's being a target killing of mom and pop shops in Fall River from the Board of Health. It's like you made up your mind that there should not be a convenience store in the Fall River. So slowly, one day, one step, three, four months, you bring up a new hearing, new something. If, the, if it's if going through the state or federally, we are, everybody's fine. Last hearing we had, you made our age go 18 to 21. Well, we lost the business. People start going to Fall River, Somerset, Swansea, New Bedford, for no good reason. The people, I had the customers who were 20 and 21. They were smoking. They are still smoking now. They don't even come to my store to buy milk and bread anymore because I cannot sell them black and mild or <coughs> jewel. So now instead of they stopping going to one store and coming back to my store, they, they said, they said we feel bad. We mean, we are with you, but sorry, we, we don't want to make five stops before we get home. I get out from work five o'clock. I'm tired. I want to go home. I just want to grab milk and bread and black and mild. But I can't stop at your store, you know, of what good sense for me, I'm just going to stop at one place. So this is another target killing that you're going for, taking our business away and giving to the smoke shops or adult uh, marijuana stores only. Uh, what is the good reason? They, they have the same licenses, we have the same licenses, we're paying for the same amount of the, the license they are paying. We're selling the same age they are selling. It's 21 for us, 21 for them. What is the reason for you to take a right from me and give it to the next door guy who, who doesn't even have any big investments? Most of us are gas station store owners who have properties. They pay six, eight, ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar tax a year to the city of Fall River. But instead, you're taking our rights and giving it to somebody who's opening a smoke shop, 500 square foot. Maybe he's paying 500 dollar rent. He's paying same amount of. License fee, 125 or 175, that's we are paying. But you telling us, oh, you guys cannot sell it? They can sell it. It intentionally seems like you want to get rid of this business who have invested in this Far River City. And you take in, because you're going to take our business, give it to him. He doesn't have any expense or less expenses than we do. So now you are basically putting pressure to close down our doors. Take livelihood away from the certain people and give it to the certain new people coming up. You favoring to the marijuana establishments? I don't know. They got big money. What is the what is attraction for you to go up, give money to the people who already has money, and closing doors the people who are already suffering through the internet, through the markets? The convenience store 15, 20 years ago was different than people go to the convenience store because the supermarkets close seven o'clock, five o'clock, eight o'clock. They close on Sunday, so convenience store had help. Now, st st big markets are stay open 24 hours. Super Walmart, you go to, they open till 11, 12. We are in competition with the big markets. It's hard for us to survive. We are in the, the vape shops uh, or the vaping products or accessories. People can buy online, 21. They don't have to come to the stores. But still, we have to compete to keep our doors open. If the person is 21, if I cannot sell it to him, Maybe he would go to the smoke shop, maybe he doesn't even go to the smoke shop, he ordered it online. How are you going to restrict that? 
and one hand you are saying that marijuana is good substance and you telling us the accessories are bad for the health and the board of health is looking into the accessories are bad but the products is good or the accessories if we sell convenience store sell it is bad for the health but if the smoke shop sell it's good for the health I and mean, what is the justification so far in front of this board we come we say something board doesn't say doesn't give their opinions only thing we lost in here is the vote yes 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 it means we you have no heart for us for as a business owners we have no representation in this board i mean this is a serious issue i think i mean that's why i think we, it's going to be a legal battle because uh, we are not i mean this board is not really looking at this it's a you most of you are doctor it's like doc, it's bad for the health to stay up late night okay but now what is that we're going to hire the police go to the people in the house and tell them okay go to the bed at nine o'clock because it's bad for your health i mean this is how, how access we're going to have to the bedrooms to the i mean where are we going this distraction this country is built on the small businesses and people's choice let the people decide what they want to do what shops they want to. if my service is not good they have to open go to the next store but if my services are good, but Board of Health is saying, oh, no, no, don't go to this guy because he's been in the business for 10 years. We want to have somebody new in the business. We want to get rid of this guy. I mean, this is, seems like your attention. I mean, I'm sorry to say that, but this is coming from my heart. I came three, four, five, six times in the previous. This Board of Health closed more stores than any other, I, I would say. I mean, I mean, I don't have proper research, but any other state in the country who closes the store don'ts. This, uh, get, we get more tickets and stuff there, it's unbelievable. I have stores in Newport, Rhode Island. I had store in Warren, Rhode Island. I had a store in different places. Maybe they go to the shops, they have complaints, they go check if their people are checking the ID, if they're not paying attention, it's fine. But there is no limits. You know, people are going left and right, one, two. We don't even get, if I don't sell, I don't make any violations, 10 times, I don't know. If my employee did or got, they don't tell us. We should get the letter. It says, okay, you guys, your employee did good. He didn't sell. He didn't make a mistake. So we appreciate. So I can appreciate my employees. They are doing good jobs. Only thing we heard is, boom, when you get the tickets, okay? Maybe he's, he checked thousand time ID, but one little time he forgot. Now you punishing the license holders, and I cannot even fire him at the time. So this, I think it's going to be more problems because the age is already 21. Accessory age is 21. So you take in, what, what is the sense? It's like you want to give more tickets, I, I would say, or what is, what is the reason behind this? It's, there is no such, uh, to me, it's, uh, I mean, I don't hear your mind, what is in your mind there? What is, what is the reason behind this? Is this a public, I mean, I speak with all the customers who come in, they have no problem whatsoever. They say, we are happy, you are one-stop shop, we can buy everything from here if he wants to. If your concern is about the children, I would say, okay, you said, okay, do not, but don't have the glass display in front of the door. Fine, no kids see it or they don't have attraction. Move everything behind the counter or move everything where people cannot see it. Or give a store owner's choice, okay, this is what we are looking into. The kids are maybe looking these things. You, your intention is good. You don't want to have the kids look at it. Give us time. Say, okay, one year from now, we want to every store owners, they should make a separate room where only adults can go in there. And then you can sell. That, I mean, make some sense what you're doing. You know what I mean? Not just target killing the business. Not just because these people are, doesn't look like us. We want to make sure their doors are closed. There should not be attention behind it. There should be a good intention behind this that we want, what is the reason? We want to hear your point of view. What is yours? So maybe we can address your issues. Maybe we want, we want to work together with the city. We don't want to go with the lawsuits against the city. We want to do business here. I don't want to have good and bad intentions. I have to come in front of you again, maybe when, we, when one of my employees make mistakes. But we, if we already have a hard feelings, I'm sure you're not going to have any sympathy for me, like you don't have sympathy for me now. So I'm sorry to say that, but uh, I think we need to look into this carefully and give us a fair chance to everybody. It should be equal for everyone. I mean, if you have any questions, I would love to answer it, but uh, I hope you don't take this personally, but I mean, this is coming from my heart. I don't have any other way to express my feelings. I came a few times. We say we've come, so many people, so many people tell us we cannot make it, but you can speak on our behalf. But when we come here, it's like 
we're talking to the walls. Everybody says, everybody says, okay, we make the decisions. We don't even have a second chance. We don't even have an opinion. What, what is in your mind? What do you think? Why we, it should be restricted? I mean, if the state is not doing it, state should do it or federally should be involved. Why would you want to close the stores in forever? That's my question to you. Thank you. Any questions if you have? No? Gentlemen in the next row. Good afternoon. Once again, can you state your name and address? Yeah. For the My room? name is Azad Kabal. I have a store, 696 Eastern Avenue, Far River, Massachusetts. It's the same question I have it regard to the attorneys. That's right. I see the three smoke shop in the Far River. This is edge line is right there. Like this wall, I ask him how much your rent. He said 350. I go to the other guy. He living upstate. He own the property. He have a small room. He open smoke shop over there. I say, how's your business? He say, okay, it's good. It's nice. 350 he pay. We pay 25 and 10 thousand dollar at least for a year for the property tax. Bread, milk, candy. You make 15 cents per gallon. Candy is 15 cents. Bread is 7 cents. How we afford it for this all sale for that and pay the uh, a worker and vice off and doing, I don't understand. But what stuff we talking about, a PAP, that, that is, is legal. You can visit, Mrs. Agilani is visit. No kid touch over there. We put in the behind the wall and doing, they help a lot for us business. A lot of help for the business, you know. If you want to close, we can close. You can watch kit is coming in the store, not too many anyways. They're coming once a while, it's open seven to 11, the five kids I see with the parents. We can put it a little more separate, more little bit more, but this is not fair. You totally stop that things for the convenience store. And not only us, I can make it. I have three kids, one going to college, one going to, I only work. <coughs> That's all is a family, we survive like that with family business. If you just cut it, who have a 350 pay the rent, and he work by himself, he make, he laughing is us, oh, you pay the tax, you pay more rent, we pay nothing and more, make uh, money more than you. I don't understand. That's why I have a request for the board, please don't pass this law and think about it. Thank you very much. That's what I said. Thank you. Next gentleman. No. Gentlemen? Anyone else want to? Oh, the gentleman in blue. Hi, my name is Malik Sagir. Uh, I run the Cloverdale Farms. Mm -hmm. There's a two store in Fall River. <coughs> you state your name and address for the record. I did. Oh, you said you, you run the Cloverdale Farms. Yes. Uh, in Far River, South Main and one is at North Main, just opened. As the Irfan said, uh, I endorse him. Basically, I want to say whatever they said, Irfan and some of attorney. So that's, I endorse them. And we add up little things uh, to make our uh, survive. Little, little things mean chips add up. So that's how we survive. And this is a pretty, pretty business, I can say that. That's why you don't see any American doing this. We hard work and we are on the business seven days, 24 hours. Even we home, we're looking at the tablets, what is going on in the business. I mean, that's how we make a little bit, adding up thing, thing, um, too many thousand things so we can make uh, expense, meet our expenses. So that's how we do. Uh, if you consider us, so we can keep selling that things. Uh, thank you very much and appreciate uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Marilyn, did you want to say something? I do.
Uh, just a couple of things. This is not a tobacco regulation. Right. For the record? For the record. Marilyn Edge, uh, Health Department, tobacco coordinator. Um, th this is not a tobacco regulation. I had no intention of speaking today because I don't have any enforcement power on this regulation. Um, but there's just a couple of things that were said today that I would like to address. Um, first of all, I, I, I know Attorney Beauregard from my legal experience um, 30 years before I did this job. Um, and I am aware that he contacted Attorney Sabara, who wrote this regulation, yesterday. Um, she did tell me she had not had a chance to return his call, but she plans to do that to answer your questions. Um, the, the reason that the police departments, and not just in Fall River and all of the surrounding communities, um, enforced Mass General Law 94C uh, about these products that we're talking about today, and not just these products, an expanded list of these products, um, for 10 years was to keep them out of the, uh, not only out of, the, out of sight, but out of um, accessibility of minors. So, and, and that was a, is a long list. Um, of products that included scales and grinders and all kinds of things. Um, when recreational marijuana became legal to use in your own home, I might add, it is not illegal, it is not legal to use anywhere. It's legal to use in your own home. Um, there was a provision that Marijuana smoking accessories were um, going to be legal to sell to persons 21 years of age or over, and that is in the state law, that it's 21 years of age or over. Um, and once that happens, almost every gas station and convenience store everywhere, not just in Fall River, began to carry those products and call their police departments and call me to make sure that they weren't going to be charged with some violation. Um, and so 10 years of work just went out the window in five minutes with that new regulation. The purpose for all of the, in all of the communities that are trying to restrict these products to adult only establishments is still so that they're not accessible to children. If people want to smoke marijuana, I don't care who smokes marijuana. I don't care how they smoke it, what, what they do with it. It has nothing, does not concern me at all, as long as they're adults. Um, and I have met with Mr. Hassan and these store owners, and we've had conversations about this regulation, this particular regulation, and why it, it, we're moving forward, and why after it was approved the last time, the board was gonna come back and expand that definition to make it more um, understandable and more specific um, to the store owners. It's not, we're not banning these products. The board's intention is not to ban these products. Um, restrict and I know restricting them to adult only establishments is how other communities including Framingham in the state have started to move forward I can tell you that when we started this discussion we had hundred and twenty eight retailers in tobacco retailers in Fall River we now have hundred and thirty two tobacco retailers in Fall River 15 of those are adult-only establishments. Mr. Hassan just opened one last week. I just licensed. And I have five more applications on my desk for adult-only establishments. Four of those are from people who already own convenience stores in Fall River. So we don't have a shortage of places where people can buy these products. I understand that out of the the two stores that Mr. Hassan owns, or three stores now, 
there, he's only going to be able to sell those products in one if this regulation passes. But it's not like you're saying you cannot sell them, which is what it used to be. From 2006 to 2016, you couldn't buy those products anywhere within a 40 mile radius unless you went to Rhode Island. So it's, it's not a, a ban on products. It's restricting them to adult only. I have had conversations with these store owners about and, and spoke to them about moving these products so that they're not visible to the general public. So people have to ask for them. That kids coming in to, after school to buy candy and gum or on a Saturday morning don't see them. It's cha changing the social norm back to what it was. That, you know, it. I don't have a problem with the recreational use of marijuana. If people want to do that, that's fine. Or purchasing these accessories. But I don't want to have to take my grandkids into a store and walk by cases of glass blown dragons and all of these fancy marijuana smoking accessories to buy chips and gum and a soda. I don't I don't want them to be able to see that. I don't think that our kids should be exposed to those kind of things when they are kids. If adults want to buy them, fine. Um, the, the man that was here from the adult only establishment came to, he came to speak to me last week. He's an adult only establishment. This regulation is not going to affect him. He's already got that, that um, license. And like I said, there, we have 132 stores already. 15 of them are adult only. You, you, you don't have to go far to find some place to buy these products. Um, I did speak to attorney Sabara today. She did suggest um, that you might want to hold off and continue it again until she has a chance to be here to answer the, the legal questions. Um, I can tell you Fall River is not the only community that's passing these regulations. Um, and I'm not sure what else I can tell you, but it's not, I, I just want to make sure that the public watching these meetings understands that we're not restricted, we're not prohibiting these products from being sold, we're not banning them from being sold. And I, I just find it ironic that some of the people that are complaining are already in a position to sell them anyway. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions for me? No? Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, just a clarification question. Yes. Uh, if I heard correctly, the, uh, the goal is to restrict it to uh, adult only places, but the regulation, if, if that's what I heard correctly, but the regulation doesn't say that. It says what, what are uh, uh, age limit, limited places, which is tobacco products and marijuana. <coughs> but like the gentleman with the adult entertainment, uh, he can't, under this regulation, correct me if I'm wrong, he can't market these products because he only uh, lets adults into his store. Number one and number two. Uh, if you go by the principle that you take the least restrictive thing to accomplish the purpose, and if the purpose is to make sure that it's only to adult only, then there are, there are regulations that can be put in place that would be directed at age, not at kinds of establishments. So I don't see that uh, the way it's worded that this regulation will accomplish what appears to be a legitimate reason to uh, control age uh, age uh, issues. I, I understand, that I, but I don't know that you're looking at the updated version with the corrections. The one that I have uh, says licensed tobacco. And is that the one that's before the board now? 
adult uh, uh, tobacco establishments and uh, cannabis. Adult only retailers. I'm sorry, can't Adult hear. only retailers, tobacco retailers, and marijuana. Well, they happen to be adult only retailers, but it doesn't say only adult. It says tobacco and it says. Uh, marijuana establishments and adult only tobacco stores. Right. So my point is. I, I, my point, I think, is well taken. My question, as I understand this, we are lifting the ban on selling several of these items if we adopt this today. Is that correct? If we don't do anything today, the regulations that we promulgated at the last meeting go into effect whatever day. If we don't, we are lifting the ban on electronic cigarettes and things, aren't we? Vaping products. That's correct. The vaping products. So the vaping if, products. if we don't lift the ban today, that other regulation is in force and right. will be in force. So we are loosening the regulation. Well, Just so we are, we're all on the same page. We are loosening the regulations. Correct. And clarifying what, what specifically is, is yes. a, a marijuana accessory. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And if I may, restricting the sales of marijuana accessories, whatever those are going to be, to cannabis establishments and licensed tobacco establishments. Nothing else. And that's in the regulation that was passed April 24. And that and the modification of that is not under consideration today? Yes, that's what we're discussing, the modification. But only on vape and vaping. To clarify the definition uh, of vaporizers, what vape pens, tanks to rely on vaporization and aerosols. I can't say that word. So the consideration of changing the regulations so as not to impact convenience stores is not something that you're entertaining today. We today we're clarifying. No, no, I know that. Whether you're entertaining. Well, that that's uh, that would be part of you know having a public hearing, listening to input. But the ma the regulation as it stands which right. would be enforceable July 1st. And then today was to eliminate confusion amongst the community sure. um, to clarify what specifically would be considered a marijuana accessory. Okay. But to be clear, my mission today and what I'm asking the board to do, whatever way you get there, is to remove the prohibition of the sale of whatever products you're going to consider marijuana accessories in convenience stores, blanket. That's what I'm here for, to make that request. Okay, well, that, that's not what we're... That, certainly the board could take that, um, that into consideration, but as it stands, the, the goal for today was to clarify what specifically would be considered a marijuana accessory. Mm -hmm. so, can I ask you a question? Of course. Do your stores sell vaping products? You that can... Because that's a huge. Yes, yes. yes. So if we and that that would be allowed. That would still be allowed under this. That would still be allowed. Well, today. last hearing we didn't have, you didn't list any products. What was what are you passing? No, but right now they're considering lifting the vaping. All the vaping products. Stay. Would, the, you would be able to continue yes. to sell. But the, but the other things we're still. You banning on the other stuff, like a pipe and other thing. Yeah. You're gonna put a ban on it or no? Still, the ban yeah, would the ban would still be in effect. If we Unless don't, if we don't vote today to lift the ban on vaping products, then July first, you can no longer sell them. Am I correct? Close. Because that regulation was already voted on. So today, we're we're here to make it a little bit easier for you by lifting the ban on the vaping products. But last time you voted on, you didn't even know what were you voting on. Because I asked the question, what are what we banning? And we didn't, nobody knows what we were banning. Right. And you are clarifying that we are, our goal is that we are selling to adults also, only adults. So that other stores sell only adults. So if your goal is set, only adults can buy the products, we are fine. But do not restrict one business and take the other one. That is our, so you, you uh, wanna, we understand the do you, want, do you want us to clarify exactly what, what items we are restricting? Yes, also and we'll, and we'll read it again. Yep, so marijuana accessories as defined in this regulation that we are, the board is uh, reviewing today, 
would be defined as equipment, products, devices, or materials that are intended or designed for use in ingesting, inhaling, or otherwise introducing adult use marijuana into the human body, including, but not limited to, bongs, pipes, glass pipes, hookah apparatus, dab rigs. Marijuana accessories shall not include vaporizers, vape pens, tanks that rely on vaporization or aerosolization. So what is marijuana accessories? Is it pipe only? Is it what what is you're not defining what is the marijuana accessories? It's including but not limited what, to when you say including but not limited to so like a hookah. I mean. Bongs, pipes, glass pipes, hookah apparatus, dab rigs. Hookah never used hookah. for the... Uh, They're not even close to using that one. Marijuana. Nobody used hookah for marijuana. So I don't know if you is, ever use hookah. If that's the case... That's what we're going to... Then, see, then. We didn't have the fair chance last time. We, we didn't know right. what we were banning. So I think we should so hold not to pass any... The, uh, there, 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 there is a... I mean, we have, I've respected your points. Mm -hmm. And you, you had a lot of good things to say. We are not here to stifle competition. We're not here to close you down. It is not our intent. And, and there, there is there's a lot of gray zone here that I think does need to be clarified. We certainly don't want to impose our will on something that's not within our purview. So I, I do think it would be reasonable to have our attorney here at the next meeting because, as you said, you know, a hookah could be used for cannabis should someone choose to for whatever reason, but its intent is not for that. And if it's being purchased by an adult over 21, who are we to say, mm -hmm. you don't have the right to sell, but the smoke shop does? Thanks, so I, I do need, before I make a decision, yeah. mm -hmm. I need that much more defined as to what that means. Because I don't want you to be innocently selling an item, a glass item, that's not intended for cannabis, but it's perceived as that, and then you get into trouble. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do think it'd be best if we had counsel here. Yeah. Oh, okay, and and if, if I could speak again, just because there's so much confusion, and I understand that that you we came in to clarify mm -hmm. these products. Um, I was not aware that the definition that the age. The adult only said adult only retail tobacco stores. I thought it was any going to be any adult only establishment. So the issue is this regulation you've already passed is going to go into effect July 1st. And so our next steps would be we could um, postpone voting today. Mm -hmm. We can rescind the April 24th. Uh, regulation that was passed so that nothing would go into effect July 1st and then we could revisit um, I'll have to check with once we set meetings with Cheryl's schedule see um, if she would be able to attend uh, I can certainly request or ask Judge sure. Macy also to attend um, to you know answer any legal questions that you may have I, I think that's I, the best I, I step to be yes, so so because so like I said right, we're, we do have a heart and we are not here to stifle mm -hmm. business but we, public safety is our first and foremost concern right. sure. particularly underage but again I you know does it have to be broken down into particular items does this constitute cannabis mm -hmm. product does this not and I, I'm not a Expert, so I do need some clarity for that. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, that's Thank that's good. So you need a motion to rescind. I'll make a motion. Wait, wait, the gentleman who first. Yes, uh, I want to say as Maryland Edge concerns, so exposed to children, we can you can add in your regulation, hide, hide, uh, put in a high place, not to exhibit or not to expose, not in a yeah. glass showcase. When you're making, uh, you're considering a new, uh, you can have clarifying a thing, so you can do the ad. We, we can do, do some kind of with the display. Yeah, in the future. So you can, you can buy the thing, you can have a container, block container. When somebody asks you, you can give it to him, and he, whatever he use, he can use for tobacco or he can use for Okay. Sea sales person for display items. Everyone, hold on just a minute. I need a procedural question. So the thing is we close the public meeting mm -hmm. and we take no action on this today. That's 
Right. Yeah. Th they will need a motion to rescind or postpone. What do we want to do? We'd have to rescind the regulation that was passed on April 12th. Okay, so we're going to... All right. So anyone else? I'm going to... Here's what, here's what we're going to do for the procedure. We're going to close the public hearing. We're going to take no action on these regulations today. The board will make a motion to rescind. You don't want to postpone, you want to rescind. Right. Just want to make sure we get the wording right. Mm -hmm. We'll have to rescind. All right, we'll rescind. Yes. And it will be, we'll let you all know, be on the agenda for the next meeting, or two, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to close the public hearing. Public hearing is closed at 2.05. We'll take no action on the regulations today. Now we got to go back to, and Peter, you'll have to word this properly for the minutes. We need a motion to rescind the regulation of the last meeting, the April 24th meeting? Yeah, and it would, it would be entitled the same, same mm -hmm. title, so just to be official, and we you can read that title. Yeah. So, may I make a motion? Of course. To rescind the regulation to ensure the safety, the sanitary and safe operation of marijuana establishments and the sale of adult use marijuana and cannabis oil. I second it. Okay, so we're voting to rescind the motion of April April 27th, April 24th, so this will all go back to as it was before. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Okay. And at our next meeting. Hey, listen. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. No, thank, you. Thank, thank, you. thank you all for coming. Next meeting. Next we meeting. Don't know yet. The next meeting is uh, we got it set up. Next right. We don't know yet. Okay. We had it. Yes. We had it set up. July. July. July 10th. At this point, it's tentatively set for Wednesday, July 10th at 1 o'clock. We'll see if that's what it is. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, they do have some dollar points. That's the tricky thing. So, if I can see what I told you, we said. Oh, yeah, July 10th. It's a very good idea. I think they have some stuff. Absolutely. Sure. Do we want to set up a meeting just so I have two days? Yeah, let's uh, the July. No, no. I think the 10th. July the 10th, yeah. Oh, you said you about that? Would it be August 7th? Oh, yeah. 14th? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry to put it up in the back. I told you that. I know it's a good thing. I told you that. Yes, I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Seven days for tomorrow. But if you see, you make the wrong decision. Yeah, yeah. Every glass I ever found to me. Yeah, that's the way. Okay, AMS. And I don't think it's a good thing. No, it just gets into the cell. A lawsuit against it. Family. Yeah. Okay. So August, I, I got to go. So okay. August 1. I can do any of these. Okay. okay. So that moves the same way first. Okay. Yeah. August 15th, what's going to be coming, but this is going to affect the other We don't know the outcome of the case. I think yeah, this because yeah. I know what's going to be done. Yeah. I'm looking at the business model. Yeah, this is the company. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's Okay, no problems. No why don't we do this? <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>